Man, you guys are great. You said there's been 10 minutes with each person. Well, yeah. I've never seen anything you like do, that in my you, life. You do what you need to do. Hey, we appreciate you. Uh, Mr. Ventura, I'm just going to tell you right off the bat, I became a big supporter of you when I saw the clip online in the summer of 2003 when you were on Jay Leno. It was heartfelt. It was energy. It was pure truth. I saw you tell people thanks for standing up for the truth. Thanks for standing up for what's right. You were on Jay Leno. You talked about Gulf of Tonkin. Since then, it's been declassified. It was all stage. You obviously knew you were inside all of that later. Yeah. Yeah. I would just like to get your view, your take on 9-11, Gulf of Tonkin, JFK, all of it. <laughs> well, I think the most interesting thing to talk about today is if people aren't aware, that due to the, uh, the uh, Freedom of Information Act, in the early 60s, the, the Pentagon had an operation called Operation Northwoods, and it never came to reality, but it was on the table that our military would attack certain cities within the United States and make it look like Cuba did it to justify an invasion of Cuba. It never happened, but just the simple fact that they contemplated it and it was actually on the table in the Pentagon, I find that just very disturbing that they would you know, even consider using our military to try to just to justify an invasion of another country. They did speak on Jay Leno, according to my uh, recollection, about how Gulf of Tonkin was staged, how you, you were lied to, we were lied to, you lost a lot of friends. What, is, what was it like to learn that they had staged an event that didn't really happen to bring us into full-scale war in 64? What, what was it like when you realized that and you learned that? Well, it was very disappointing to believe in your country that they would lie to you to get into a war, that they would perpetrate a lie and that the media would go along with it. It's a real eye-opener, and you realize that if they would do it in the 60s, they'll do it again. If it works once, it'll work again government very much operates that way and I tr I really learned about it when McNamara did his tour with film and he came to Harvard when I was teaching there and they pretty much had to lock me up in a room <laughs> so that I wouldn't confront him and uh, what would you say to him if you were in a room with him? I would ask him why we were lied to and what the purpose was for it the one thing I do question on 9-11 is the fact that if anyone's familiar with the Payne Stewart, the golfer, and when he died, he was flying in a private plane, and they lost contact with that private plane out of Florida, and within 30 minutes, they had a fighter jet up on the wing. And that fighter stayed with it all the way till it crashed in Nebraska, making sure that it didn't harm anyone. And the thing I questioned on 9-11 was simply the fact, where were our planes? When all of this was going on and planes were being hijacked an hour apart and there were four of them to cover about a six hour space, at no time to my knowledge did we have any fighter planes up in the air. Why? Well, the default position is to send up fighters. Right. Why weren't they? In light of the fact that there was a cover up that got us into the Vietnam War and there was, in my opinion, a cover up of John Kennedy's assassination. I would just say that I don't believe it's beyond reason to not at least consider that the government certainly would do things like that. You're here, you know about Tonkin, you know about Northwoods, you, you know you, you know about Well, Mainstream. I know about those things from reading on Kennedy, is how most of them came out. Well, that's my, right, Kennedy my, said no to Northwoods. Through, through, through my research of Kennedy is how I learned of most of these things. Yeah, I Kennedy. question it only because of the Payne Stewart situation. And Northwoods. And Northwoods. But as far as me having any knowledge that we were lied to, I don't. Uh, as far as JFK goes, well, I've been studying that for 25 years or 20 years, I guess, or more now. And I don't believe for one minute the Warren Commission. Uh, I think that, that uh, it's fraudulent in the fact that uh, if you break it down to simplistic form, if Lee Harvey Oswald is who they told us he was, this little disgruntled Marine who became a communist and decided to kill the president, then why would all the information have to be locked up in national security and kept secret for 20 years? Well, sir, you were a Navy SEAL. Three shots in six seconds with a bolt-action rifle, you're not going to hit the side of a barn. At least no, in... I don't believe he could make the shot. Can you speak to that? Uh, as far as the shots, he did three of them and the magic bullet and the head shot. I've been to Dealey Plaza and I don't think he could make the shots in my opinion because it was a difficult shot with a target going away from you and dropping and not only that he had to shoot through a tree.
If you go up to the nest, you look and see this massive tree, and it's the same size today as it was back in 1963. I buy, I don't buy the Warren Commission. I don't buy what their results. I don't buy that they that they deemed Oswald the killer. And one of the main reasons is because in our country, you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Lee Harvey Oswald has never been offered a trial in a court of law to determine whether he was guilty or innocent or not. He never got that. He's been convicted by public opinion and convicted by our government. In abstention. Right. And the point of the matter is, is that uh, that's unfair that history should be documented that way when there's no, there's no definitive evidence that he did it, in my opinion. We're told to give up liberty and we'll get security. We give up uh, liberty and we get security? No. And I think that's very clear. Anyone that believes that is, is naive because I think it was made very clear in the hurricane in New Orleans. They had two weeks to prepare for that and couldn't save anybody. How are they going to save you from a terrorist attack that doesn't tell you when it's going to happen? Absolutely. So I don't buy that, they, that we're any more safe today than we were prior to 9-11 because uh, a hurricane in New Orleans proved that to me. They can't and they won't help us. In fact, they didn't come with food and water. They came to confiscate guns. In New Orleans? Oh, yeah. No, I wouldn't doubt it. Have you and, seen that footage well, of the troops taking the it, it, it was also, I found very interesting that Richard Nixon had the 82nd Airborne in there when the hurricane hit back in the 70s within 24 hours. And yet this president didn't do a thing for eight days, you know, before he reacted and sent troops in there. And for people that say that, well, you can't blame President Bush, yes, I fully blame him for the hurricane. And you know why? Because it covered more than one state. Anytime any tragedy like that encompasses more than one state, it immediately falls to federal jurisdiction. The other reason I blame George Bush for the hurricane and what happened afterwards is because the only people in our country capable logistically of handling a tragedy like that is the U.S. military. They're the only ones that logistically have the equipment to do it. It's just the fact that there were, you know, that the military is the only one capable of handling that type of disaster, and so they ha they should have been called in immediately, and they weren't. And, and uh, you know, so that tells me that the country can't protect you. You have to protect yourself. Uh, your whole comment on how 9-11 has been used to set up a, 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 I believe it's a police state. What do you think is going to happen? Well, I, I, you know, I don't know if it's a police state or not, the whole war on terrorism, but I do know that any time the government tells you they're going to protect you, be prepared because you're going to lose your freedom and your rights. And I personally, my personal viewpoint is I'd rather deal with the terrorists than I would the loss of my freedom. And I think that ultimately, I hate to say this, we're winning on the battlefield, but I think the terrorists are winning the war because they're changing America. These were also the same people that told us there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. So take it with the grain of salt. They were wrong once, they could be wrong again. You think they're wrong or they're lying premeditatedly? I don't know. I don't have that opinion. But what, what, so no, I mean, they deliver the information. It's how the information's interpreted. You can interpret information any way you want.